Hey everyone, welcome back to Footy Leagues Around the World. It is your host, Ryan. It's been a while since we've talked about football in South America, or frankly, somewhere outside of Brazil. So today, by popular demand, we will be exploring the football pyramid of Colombia. Footy Leagues Around the World Footy Leagues, heck yeah! Before we begin, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for alerts whenever a new video comes along. The channel has now surpassed 2,300 subscribers, and I am just so humbled and thankful for all the support that you all have shown me. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Colombia is located in northwestern South America. Its 1,000-mile coastline touches both the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, and it is bordered by Panama to the northwest, Venezuela and Brazil to the east, and Peru and Ecuador to the south. It is more than twice the size of France and has a population of 51.87 million, according to the World Bank. Its official language is Spanish, and its capital and largest city is Bogota. There are three tiers to the Colombian football pyramid. At the top is the Categoria Primera A, also known as the Liga Bet Play de Mayor. D Mayor refers to the Division Mayor del Football Profesional Colombiano, the organizing body of Colombia's two professional football tiers. Made up of 20 teams as of 2024, the league plays a two tournament season, an Apertura and a Finale Sesión. The Apertura starts in January and ends in June after each team plays the others in their group once over a 19 game regular season. After this, the top eight teams move on to a semi-final stage. Here, teams are split randomly into two groups and play the others in their group twice before the top team in each group move on to a two-leg final. If both games end in an aggregate tie, a league winner is decided on penalties. The Finale Session works the same way, except it starts in July and ends in December. At the end of both tournaments, the winner or winners of each automatically qualify for the Copa Libertadores group stage, South America's equivalent of the UEFA Champions League. The next top two teams across the aggregate table qualify for the second stage of the Copa Libertadores. If one team wins both league tournaments, the next top three teams that don't qualify for the Copa Libertadores qualify for the first stage of the Copa Sudamericana, South America's equivalent of the Europa League. If there are two different tournament winners, four teams qualify for the Copa Sudamericana. Like a few other Latin American leagues do and have done in the past, Colombia's top flight operates an aggregate relegation system, meaning that teams are relegated based on the sum of all Apertura games played across their three most recent seasons. Those point tables are added up and are then divided by the total number of games played in the top flight across the last six seasons. From there, the bottom two teams are relegated to the Primera B. Liga MX in Mexico used to have a system like this, and I absolutely hated it. But let me know what you think about this kind of relegation system in the comments below. Good idea or bad idea? The most successful side in Categoria Primera A history are Atletico Nacional from Medellin, who have 17 titles. The current champions of the 2024 Apertura stage are Atletico Bucaramanga, who won their first title ever just a few months ago. Second on the pyramid is the Categoria Primera B, also known as the Torneo Betplay D Mayor for sponsorship reasons. Made up of 16 teams, this league also operates two tournaments a year called simply Torneo 1 and Torneo 2. Torneo 1 starts in February and ends in June, while Torneo 2 kicks off in July and ends in December. Like the Primera A, each tournament starts with each team playing 16 games before the top 8 teams advance to a semi-final stage. From here, teams are divided into two groups of four and play their groupmates twice before the top team in each group moves on to a two-leg final to determine a tournament winner. At the end of both tournaments, an aggregate table determines who is promoted. If a team ends up top of the table based on points across both tournaments, they are automatically promoted, along with the other tournament winner, like what happened at the end of the 2023 season. If the top team overall is not also a tournament winner, like in 2022, a two-leg promotion playoff is held between them and the other tournament winner to determine who is promoted. There is no relegation from this level of football. 
Both the Primera A and the Primera B are fully professional leagues. Third and final on the pyramid is the Torneo Nacional de Interclubs Primera C. This amateur competition is organized by this group, also known as D Football, an entity dependent on the Colombian Football Federation. According to the D Football website, the 2024 Primera C is broken into 16 groups of various sizes. Some groups have as few as four teams, some have as many as 10 teams. These groups are divided by geography and each team plays the others in their group twice. After this, some amount of teams advance to a playoff round, but details from here are slim. According to the Colombian Football Federation website, the 2022 version of the Premier C was played between 230 clubs over eight phases. A team called Total Soccer de Medellin have won the last two Premier C titles. I have seen it suggested that promotion could begin between Primera C and Primera B, with as many as two teams moving up as soon as 2022. However, as of today, promotion and relegation still don't exist between those two tiers. Besides its men's leagues, there is also a women's league in Colombia called the Liga Femenina Profesional de Football Colombiano, or the Liga Femenina Betplay de Mayor for sponsorship reasons. As of the 2024 season, 15 teams competed across 14 games before the top 8 teams advanced to a semi-final stage. In the semi-finals, teams are divided into two groups and play their other groupmates twice before the top team from each group moves on to a two-leg final. These two finals teams qualify for the Copa Libertadores Femenina. This season lasts from February to August. There is no relegation from this league. The most successful side in league history has been Santa Fe with three titles, while the most recent champion was Deportivo Cali. Besides its leagues, Colombia has two cup competitions. The first is the Copa Colombia, also known as the Copa Betplay Di Mayor for sponsorship reasons. This is your standard two-leg knockout competition between 36 teams, or every team from the first two tiers of the Colombian football pyramid. This competition lasts between March and November and has been won most by Atletico Nacional, who have six titles including the most recent one in 2023. There is also the Superliga Colombiana, a single two-leg home and away contest at the beginning of every Apertura season, between the previous year's Apertura and Finalización winners. If there is a tie at the end of the two games, there is a penalty shootout to determine a winner. Santa Fe has won the most Superliga titles with four, while Millonarios is the most recent winner. As football is the most popular sport in Colombia, teams can be found all over the most inhabited parts of the country. You won't find any professional teams in the far east or south of the country because those regions are mostly dense jungle and home to a portion of the Amazon rainforest. The country's most populous city, Bogota, is also home to the most professional clubs with seven. The country's third most populous city, Cali, is home to three pro clubs, while a nearby city to Cali, Palmira, is also home to three professional teams, including Deportivo Cali. The country's second most populous city, Medellin, is currently home to two professional clubs. As is the story with many other South American countries, stadiums used by professional Colombian clubs are on the older side, having been typically built between the 1930s and the 1970s. However, a majority of these older stadiums have received renovations within the last 20 years. The newest stadium used by a Primera A side is the 12,000 capacity Estadio Jaraguay in Monteria, home of the Jaguars de Cordoba. The newest stadium used by a Primera B side is the 16,162 capacity Estadio Sierra Nevada in Santa Marta, home to Union Magdalena. Some of the largest and most notable stadiums being used by professional Colombian clubs include the 46,788 capacity Estadio Metropolitana in Barranquilla, the 44,826 capacity El Atanasio in Medellin, and the 39,512 seat El Campín in Bogota. Since football is taken so seriously and loved by so many Colombians, there are some fantastic football derbies across the country. Some of the largest are cross-town rivalries between clubs from the same city or region. One example of this is the Clasico Vallo Cocano between America de Cali and Deportivo Cali. 
It is regarded as one of Colombia's oldest and most passionate rivalries, having been first played in an amateur regional championship in 1931, with both teams being closely matched in the all-time series. Deportivo Cali is currently winning the rivalry with 125 wins to 105 wins, with 108 draws across the tie. Another crosstown rivalry is El Clasico Paisa between Atletico Nacional and Independiente Medellin. This rivalry has been dominated by Atletico Nacional, who has won 134 matches, while Independiente Medellin have won 96. Finally, Colombia's Super Clasico is held between Atletico Nacional and Bogota side Millonarios. Across 294 games, Millonarios have 111 wins versus 85 by Atletico Nacional. There are of course plenty of other rivalries in the country that we just don't have time to talk about, so we will move on. While the origins of football in Colombia are debated, many historians think that the game was first introduced from the Caribbean in the north of the country. Furthermore, it is believed that the origins go back to 1900 when English railway engineers from the Columbia Railways Company were creating a railway between the cities of Barranquilla and Puerto Colombia. The 1918 Campeonato Nacional was the first official football tournament held in the country and was played between just two teams, both from Bogota. A single game was played and Bartolinos won 3-2 over Colombia FC. A year later, this cup was held and is recognized as the country's second official football tournament. In 1924, the Colombian Football Federation was formed, eventually gaining FIFA and CONMEBOL affiliation in 1936. In 1948, the first professional league was organized by the Colombian Football Federation and Di Mayor. Made up of 10 teams, those teams all paid an entrance fee of 1,000 pesos and represented the cities of Bogota, Cali, Manizales, Pereira, and Barranquilla. 252 players were registered, 182 of which were Colombians, along with 13 Argentinians, 8 Peruvians, 5 Uruguayans, 2 Chileans, two Ecuadorians, one Dominican, and one Spaniard. Santa Fe from Bogota ended up winning the first championship. Internal disputes later that year between Ata Football, the body governing amateur football in Colombia, and Di Mayor caused Di Mayor to leave the Colombian Football Federation. In response, FIFA suspended the league and the national team from all international tournaments. This period, between 1949 and 1954, was known as El Dorado. At the same time as this dispute was happening in Colombia, the Argentine Football Association was dealing with a strike by its players. Several of the most important Argentinian players were looking to leave the country, and as the Colombian League was not affiliated with FIFA, Colombian clubs that wished to sign them were not required to pay transfer fees. Alfonso Senor, the chairman of Millonarios FC, decided to take advantage of the situation by signing several Argentine stars, including Argentine legend Adolfo Pedernera. Other Colombian clubs began scrambling to follow suit by signing stars from all over South America and Europe. In 1950, Di Mayor and FIFA agreed to end El Dorado, but the era didn't officially end until recently signed foreign players returned to their countries in 1954. While you would think a period of FIFA suspension would be bad for a country, I've actually heard this period be referred to as Colombia's golden age of football. The foreign stars that Colombian clubs sign caused a boom in attendance, expanding the appetite of club competitions across the country, which resulted in the creation of the Copa Colombia in 1950. That knockout competition was played sporadically over the next 58 years and only became an annual tournament in 2008. In 1968, the Categoria Primera A started following the pattern emerging in South America by replacing its year-long tournament with two shorter ones. Another league restructuring came in 1991 with the addition of second and third divisions. The third division had its 2002 edition canceled for economic reasons and stopped awarding promotion to the professional tiers in 2003. Primera C continued until 2010, when the league was cancelled for more than a decade. It resumed as an amateur competition in 2021. 
In 2017, the Colombian Women's Football League was founded, the first professional women's league in the country. Two Colombian clubs have won the Copa Libertadores. Medellin side Atletico Nacional won the competition in 1989 and 2016, while Once Caldez won in 2004. Several other clubs have made it to the finals of this competition, but did not win. Santa Fe became the first Colombian winners of the Copa Sudamericana in 2015. Atletico Nacional are the only Colombian winners of the Recopa Sudamericana. Colombian clubs have won other international club competitions like the Copa Interamericana and the Copa Mercanorte, but those competitions have since been abolished. Colombia's top flight only allows four foreign players to be registered on a roster, and only three foreign players can be named in a starting 11. According to Transfer Market, there are 60 foreign players currently rostered in the Primera A, making up 10.4% of all players in the league. Argentinians and Uruguayans represent the majority of foreign players, with 31 in total, followed by 12 Venezuelans. Other South and Central Americans hail from countries like Panama, Paraguay, El Salvador, Brazil, Ecuador, and Costa Rica. Remaining foreign players come from Spain, the Dominican Republic, Armenia, and France. Of the 26 players included in the latest Colombian national team squad, only one of them plays club football in Colombia, Millenarios goalkeeper Alvaro Montero. The rest of them play at top clubs in both Europe and South America, in countries like Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, the United States, England, Spain, Belgium, Italy, and Russia. Some of the country's top players who play outside of the country include the likes of James Rodriguez, Jefferson Lerma, Luis Diaz, Davidson Sanchez, and Juan Cadrado. While most of Colombia's current stars play abroad, the country is still home to some well-known names who previously played football in Europe. They include the likes of Alfredo Morelos, who is currently on loan at Atletico Nacional. Others have returned home in the twilights of their career. These players include Radamel Falcao, who plays at Millonarios, Carlos Baca, who plays at Atletico Junior, and David Espina, who plays at Atletico Nacional. The player with the most caps for the national team is goalkeeper David Ospina, who has 128 caps and is still active with the national team. The country's top goal scorer is Falcao, who had 36 goals between 2007 and 2023. He recently retired from the national team. For those that can't go to games, Primera A and B games are broadcasted domestically on Win Sports and Win Plus Football. Select games are broadcasted domestically on RCN Nuestra Tele. For those outside of the country, RCN broadcasts select games in 16 countries besides Colombia, mostly in Central and South America, but also as far as Australia and New Zealand. For those in the United States, Canada, and Mexico, all Colombian top flight games can be found via the streaming service Fanatis. In the US, games can also be streamed on Fubo TV and on the streaming service VIX. For those looking for highlights on YouTube, you're in luck. Through the official Win Sports YouTube channel, highlights of every game in the first and second divisions can be found in full HD. This channel also has live streams of second division and cup games. Well, that's it for Colombia. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the channel and its content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and we will see you next time.